Hello everyone and welcome to 2020's virtual BMC exchange. This session is about the next in new for every autonomous digital enterprise. I'm Ali Siddiqui and I'll be co-presenting this with my conspirator, co-conspirator and good friend Ram Chakravarti. Ram is the Chief Technology Officer for BMC and he leads our strategy, corporate development, and our innovation labs. So to put this in high gear, to take it forward, here is Ram. Ali, thank you. Folks, I am thrilled to be here sharing the stage with Ali and sharing our perspectives and strategic bets on the next 10 new for every autonomous digital enterprise. Before we proceed further, I also want to share how excited I am that Ali Siddiqui is at the helm at BMC as BMC's chief product officer. With Ali oversees the entire product portfolio for BMC and that is truly a game changer for us. So with that said, let's get into the exciting stuff. But before we do that, we are mandated to share the disclaimers given some of the forward looking statements. This is not the exciting stuff, but this is mandatory. We will now move to the exciting stuff. I'm All right. On the stream. So those, for those of you that heard Ayman's keynote earlier today on the autonomous digital enterprise, there were a lot of messages to take away, and, and I'm going to spend 30 seconds doing a quick recap. We believe that every company will be a tech-driven company by 2025 or thereabouts, with the aspirational state being to evolve to an autonomous digital enterprise. So the logical question then becomes, what is an autonomous digital enterprise or an ADE? I define an ADE as an entity that comprises intelligent, interconnected, tech-enabled, value-creating systems that operate with minimal human involvement across every facet of the organization, being whether it's its internal functions or in partnership with its eco external ecosystem. Now, this does not mean that the role of people is minimized. What we believe is the role of people is going to be elevated from doing the mundane repetitive tasks to more strategic decision-making tasks that power the autonomous digital enterprise. So an ADE is growth-minded and change-oriented and is anchored on three success criteria. These being business agility, customer centricity, and actionable insights. But beyond these success criteria, you have to look at multiple layers in order for organizations to become autonomous digital enterprises. There is a set of operating model characteristics that are fundamentally required. In other words, an operating model transformation is at the heart of this evolution. Beyond the operating model characteristics, there is a set of game changers in terms of technology tenets that enable organizations to move forward and become ADEs. And we are really going to talk about these technology tenets first in terms of the differentiated capabilities and then dive into the specific strategic bets that we are making across all of these. Before I get into each of these individual technology tenets, I want to ground us in a couple of assumptions which are applicable across all of these five tenets. The first assumption is that AI is at the core of every single technology tenet or enabler that powers an autonomous digital enterprise. The second is that we believe that for the foreseeable future, it's going to be a hybrid IT landscape that comprises a diverse mix of hyperscalers, private clouds, on-prem data centers, and even the venerable mainframe. So with those assumptions, let's tease each of these out, starting with transcendent customer experience. Providing a transcendent customer experience is a true differentiator for successful companies. And what this means is consistently exceeding customer expectations at every touch point, not just in the customer journey, but across the entire customer life cycle. Now, CRM, loyalty management, all of those are important, but they're all table stakes. The really differentiated capabilities are as follows. One, journey analytics and orchestration using integrated and secured customer data that was not available to the extent uh, it is now. Second, 
To deliver a truly amazing customer experience, you also need to embrace the concept of differentiation and customer service. This is where conversational AI-enabled digital assistants, chatbots, augmented reality, and virtual reality really become game changers. So folks, I mean, I'm really excited about some of the strategic bets that we are making. One of the most exciting that, uh, things that happened recently is the announcement last week that BMC acquired this awesome company called Comaround. And Comaround provides not, uh, natural language enabled knowledge engine that helps us to deliver an amazing employee experience. So super excited about this and a lot in store ahead of us on this front. Let me now turn our attention to automation everywhere, which is at the heart of what we do today and will be doing for the long haul. Pervasive automation is the norm in every autonomous digital enterprise. I'm going to address this by covering six distinct topics. One, it starts, automation starts with discovery. And this is not just about asset discovery in a complex hybrid landscape, but is also about process discovery and mining. Speaking of process, let's give a nod to process automation and indeed the hyper automation agenda with AI enabled RPA for task specific automation at the forefront of process automation. And we are making very selective bets in terms of augmenting our capabilities with RPA. The third piece is service management. And in service management, it's not just about the natural evolution of IT service management to line of business service management. The key here is as follows. It's about pervasive integration with the best in class commercial off the shelf solutions and RPA to provide the seamless end to end experience in the context of the overall service management uh, uh, capability. In addition to that, what I already mentioned with game changers such as virtual assistants, uh, NL enabled knowledge management engines uh, for self service capabilities are also a big part of this continuum. In addition to multi-cloud deployment of service management to meet customers' preferences. The, th the fourth bucket that I wanna cover here is what is happening in the operations management space. So we've seen the evolution from monitoring to observability. Monitoring tells you what went wrong. Observability builds on this with AI ops to tell you why it went wrong. But in as much as it does this, both monitoring and observability are passive. Where we are making huge strategic bets is in this notion that we define as actionability. Actionability is about using the observable insights to take preventive, predictive, and in some case, deliberately reactive actions to secure your complex hybrid IT landscape with a set of automated actions. The key to uh, all of this is really enterprise best-in-class orchestration. And I define this as the ability to provide enterprise scale orchestration capabilities, starting with process orchestration, RPA orchestration, application orchestration, orchestrating data pipelines, uh, DevOps tool chain orchestration, and going all the way down to infrastructure orchestration and even orchestrating at the edge. Super exciting area for us and stay tuned for uh, more on this from Ali. The last thing that I want to give a nod to in Automation Everywhere is recognizing the impact of the pandemic and the cost mandate in many organizations. The importance of uh, intelligent capacity and cost optimization has come to the forefront. And this is also where differentiated solutions that provide this kind of intelligent capacity and cost optimization are becoming increasingly prominent in organizations. Let me then turn our attention to enterprise DevOps. Now, enterprise DevOps is the natural evolution of software DevOps. And in as much as the surrounding processes, uh, organizational processes such as uh, audit and controls, infra hardening, release governance, and other things that are not core part of DevOps, stymie the overall agility of DevOps and that they need to be redesigned, I really want to talk about a specific set of differentiated capabilities in uh, DevOps. In no particular order, these include DevSecOps becoming uh, mainstream with the increased automation and integration of security into the DevOps uh, uh, practice. The second is the continuous, the shift left uh, continues to proliferate with everything as code. The third is AI enabled value screen management and governance. And the fourth area that's particularly interesting to us is this notion of reliability analytics 
as we solve for the increasing prominence and importance of the SRE persona. So that's part of what we are looking to do in terms of differentiation in enterprise DevOps. Next, let's move to the data-driven business. The ability for organizations to monetize data as an asset and realize value from their data assets is increasingly important as seen from the continued investments in data and analytics transformations. The challenge here though, is many organizations are not necessarily seeing the full value realization from their data analytics transformation initiatives. The reason for this is multifold, but, the re but what this has led to is the spawning of new capabilities in this arena. And these are data ops and ML ops. Simply put, data ops and ML ops are, application, are the application of agile engineering and DevOps best practices to the data management space to turn new insights rapidly into production deliverables. And if you tease that out further and think about differentiated capabilities here, the ability to orchestrate complex data pipelines from source all the way through insights is a very important part of the data ops uh, movement. Complementing this are the next gen capabilities around data governance, data acquisition, automated data testing, data catalog management, data security, and a whole host of others where we're making huge bets as part of en enabling you, our customers, to become data-driven businesses. The last focus area, the fifth technology enabler is adaptive cybersecurity. At first blush, adaptive cybersecurity is all about the incorporation of AI into all your existing cybersecurity functions. But let's also consider here for a moment that AI can be both a boon and a curse with ever sophisticated cyber threats rising. In fact, it is expected that we will see a 300% increase in cyber threats over the next five years. So organizations really need to beef up their overall security posture, one that includes even the mainframe becoming part of their security posture. So if you look for differentiated capabilities here, in no particular order again, if you look at the rise in the adoption of public cloud infrastructure and their embedded security features, if you connect the puzzle pieces around a hybrid IT landscape, cloud workload protection platforms become pretty important. In addition to that, as mentioned before, DevSecOps becomes mainstream. Other things that become mainstream are zero trust frameworks. In addition to that, there are going to be more sophisticated multi-factor authentication with, uh, techniques with biometric sensing, complemented by capabilities such as user and entity, entity behavior analytics. A lot of exciting things here. Now, I've kind of set the stage. Now let's really get to the super interesting stuff. And let me turn it over to Ali to talk about the specific bets we are making in different areas to enable the autonomous digital enterprise. Over to you, Ali. Thank you, Ram. And it's always exhilarating to hear you talk about the EDE journey. And I've heard it many times, uh, but I can tell you every time I hear it, I think of all the customers who I talk to and it really resonates with our customers and it really resonates with what they're trying to do to get to EDE. So to start with, I want to remind everyone like Ayman Sayyid in his uh, keynote this morning uh, talked about us uh, BMC launching the ADE Foundation. So to give you more details, what it is, it's a unified platform for engagement, observability, actionability and automation. So what I have here is if you look at the platform on the right hand side, I put the picture together. It's a single platform that brings service operations, monitoring, as well as automation all together and delivers key capabilities and differentiated solutions to our customers in the ADE journey. In the middle, what you see is a persistent layer single data model which powers our CMDB through dynamic service modeling, a time series database, highly scalable, events and logs, which you can bring all together to provide a single persistent layer of data lake. On the right-hand side, what you see is what Ram talked about is the evolution of observability to active automation and actionability. So you can see how we integrate and how we deliver actionability through our 
world number one orchestrator of orchestrator in control M on the right hand side. We are integrating out of box with RPA because we believe RPA is a big part of the actionability process automation, CI CD, whether that's through third party data sources through the Jenkins or uh, our partners of VSMs like digital.ai, intelligent automation and alarm analytics. I want to call your attention to the middle layer, which talks about at the core of this is an AI foundation core layer, which includes capabilities that power all our solutions, capabilities such as AI NLP, anomaly detection, correlation, probable root cause, as well as predictive IT and optimization. And what this really means on the left side is that this is the system of engagement. This is how it interacts with, with, with the users and the employees is through capabilities such as service requests, proactive resolution, service desk, incident change management, capacity optimization, and workload automation. I wanna emphasize that this is an open platform where we really believe there'll always be multi-vendors in any data center with all our customers. We work, we've been working with many of our customers on this and that's one of the gems of knowledge that we've learned, how to integrate with your existing tools. So you can bring in data from vulnerability management tools like CallSys and Rapid7, metrics from AppDynamics, New Relic, or other APM tools, or SolarWinds, or NetGrain, network monitoring tool, or our, our own Intuity uh, products, as well as business KPIs, topology, and logs into a single place to, pro to, to power this data uh, lake, as well as the actionability, the AI core capabilities, all act on the same data persistence layer. Next, uh, so, now, moving forward, I want to talk about, go a little bit deeper on how this plays into our portfolio. To start with our BMC Helix portfolio, and I'm so proud of the team on being seven in a year, years in a row, a leader in the MQ, uh, Gartner MQ, and really being number one in eight of the 12 cap critical capabilities with BMC Helix ITSM. Really amazing to see that. Uh, so what, you see here is how these same platform, single platform powers our predictive IT and optimized capabilities on the top, which is around modern op, app art optimization. So it's not just about monitoring as Ram had alluded to earlier, it's about actionability. So how do you optimize your workloads on a Kubernetes or a cloud environment and, and really look into the future with predictive IT through forecasting or capacity analysis. And then delivering a customer experience on the right side, the experience, as well as an amazing employee experience is a key part of this platform or system of engagement through digital assistance, our next generation chatbots, industry award-winning chatbots, I might add to that, uh, and DevOps and swarming capabilities. What you see at the bottom is the AI ops that we are powering now with the same platform. And really it's about AI ops from user to application to network irrespective of the data source, as well as using topology to, prob to provide you probable root cause, which is a game changer in this industry. On the left side, you see our AI TSM and service automation being powered by the same platform, really around service desk automation. And the next generation of proactive problem and incident, major incident management, which we are rolling out with many of our customers. And thanks to our customers, we are really making sure uh, this works for our, all our customer base, and it's been a great, exciting journey for BMC Helix. Next, please. Hey, Ali, actually, before we move to the next slide, I have a question for you. How does come around uh, even further our aspirations in this space? Thank you, Ram. Really good question. So it really plays in two parts. Uh, in AI TSM, as we deliver self-service, and especially in the new normal of, of the pandemic, self-service is going to become a key because remote workers and whether remote experience will interact and you want automation, knowledge management powered by NLP to deliver this self-service and provide an amazing experience to your employees as, and customers. This is the two areas the world-class leading um, company we just bought come around plays, plays in. Thank you, Ali. Oh, thank you. 
So let me deep dive a little bit. I talked about AI ops and predictive IT at a high level. So really, what we're really doing is an industry game changer with AI ops, where I, and this is like the, uh, uh, you see a screenshot of, of what we are delivering, where you can see the topology, not just you see the probable root cause easily pointed out, but more importantly, tell you what's the actionable insight, the actionability part where on the left, you can clearly see, we tell you this is the problem we can cause and here is how to fix it. Or here are ways to fix your issues before they start impacting your customer. The other aspect is the predictive IT part, being able to optimize your modern workloads with the AI ops engine and have actionable insight and remediation. So if you're running on Kubernetes on cloud, you have multiple workloads, how do you know your performance bottleneck and what should you do to optimize the workload running on those modern architectures like service mesh, Kubernetes, OpenShift and Dockers? Next, please. So I wanna take little, little uh, five minutes to just talk about uh, uh, the enterprise scale orchestration uh, and how best in class orchestrator of orchestrator in our viewpoint uh, works. So you see on the right hand side, the seven layered cake. Uh, and, 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 and it's really about, if you see at the top about business automation. So this could be your supply chain or your work order, SAP work order or your Oracle or Salesforce uh, business application to automate your, your payrolls and your, uh, and your, uh, and your uh, supply chains, right? That's at the top. Um, after that, it's about data orchestration. That's the second layer to provide insights and centric uh, capabilities with our orchestrator, with our orchestrator of orchestrator, where you can do Hadoop uh, uh, orchestration or you can do data pipeline orchestration like Airflow and things like that. And then process automation is a key aspect where RPA and task automation play. Uh, big time. And this really is efficiency centric. And, 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 and I'll talk further how we complement RPA and how we think RPAs complement something like orchestrator of orchestrator together. It's a joint solution which will deliver value to our customers. Next, you, you think the application build and release. So this is about deploying applications quickly, making sure they're going live and, and integrating with your CI, CD and CD pipelines through third, uh, which could be many, many tool chains, think of many tool chains, how to automate that. And most importantly, how to bring that, how, uh, it's about bringing that to enterprise scale. That's what you want to do with application build and, and uh, enterprise scale orchestration. The one below that is infrastructure op op optimization. So typical tools like our own true site server automation or Ansible or Terraform play a big part there. So being able to orchestrate across that also infrastructure automation, you want to be able to do that if you want to be best in class uh, in, 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 in service orchestration. The next frontier and the seventh layer that you see is around edge orchestration, which is a really an area of innovation that's happening out there right now. How do you bring the edge into the same orchestrator of orchestrator and enterprise orchestration framework? That's, that's a key aspect or I would say all these seven put together really represent the key aspect of any best in class orchestration that needs to happen in an enterprise. Next, please. And this market, as you can see, is evolving from innovation to business automation. And we really are fortunate at BMC to really have the number one product in Control M uh, in this space, which really provides service orchestration and an automation platform where you can do event-driven workflow and service schedule task automation through a single platform called Control M. It really is the best out there. And what it does, what you see on the right-hand side is really these four things, where you can do business service automation as we talked about through a single platform and orchestrate that, uh, your, your payrolls, your, your, your work orders, your, your supply chain, all that stuff, uh, or, or your cloud deployments, things like that. You can also do data pipeline um, uh, orchestration. You might have Airflow integrate that with your control M to provide the holistic orchestrator of orchestrator for you. You, you can also, uh, as I said, uh, we are integrating RPA like UI path as well as automation out of box with our, with our tool chain. So, you, so that complements our control M platform as these two are complementary to each other. RPA and what control M does is complementary to each other. Then DevOps with job as code, as well as our uh, Control M's capabilities in this areas to 
orchestrate uh, the CI/CD tool ch pi, uh, chain. You can orchestrate all of that through Control M. Last but not the least, as cloud becomes a must-have and sees more traction in all the enterprises, Control M lets you orchestrate your Kubernetes or your cloud native applications, as well as AWS and integrates with AWS and Google and Azure to provide you a single orchestrator platform that orchestrates across all these five things. Super. Nick? Ali, I want to share something with the audience uh, here. So uh, I would love to have everybody tune in tomorrow at 10.50 a.m. Central, where we have a panel discussion on Helix Control and SaaS. Ali, anything to add to that regarding yeah. Helix Control and SaaS? Yeah, point, Ram, and thank you so much for adding that because we are very proud of uh, what we just delivered to I mean, talked about it, and, and it's going to be a panel discussion tomorrow around BMC Control M. It's really about making automation even easier for you to consume in the enterprise with a SaaS delivery model of Control M. That's what BMC Control M is. Please do join the session, and you'll learn a lot more. Thank you. Next, please. So now I want to talk about this big acquisition we did and how we're combining that in, into our Z Solutions mainframe. Modern mainframe, that's the key word. Modernizing your mainframe and bringing a modern mainframe to all our customers. Our mainframe customers is the key theme that we are doing here at BMC along with the CompuWare acquisition. It has four parts that you can see there. To start on the left top, BMC Amy Security, that's your mainframe superhero. And that's what we want to deliver with the BMC Amy Security. On the right tab, it's BMC Amy App Dev, powered by CompuWare to bring modern agile and DevOps practices to the mainframe and also make them seamless with your distributed agile and DevOps practices. That's a key aspect of what we're doing with BMC App Dev. Really great stuff coming about. And I really believe with the power of CompuWare and BMC now, we offer the only solution, industry leading solution in the mainframe that will bring our customers into a modern mainframe journey and really be part of the ADE. On the right bottom, the BMC Amy Ops, that includes our world-class main view, as well as our new solutions like BMC, AMI, AI Ops. Really excited about that coming soon. And really it's about delivering machine learning AI to proactively notify you of things that go, might go wrong and run your mainframe like a, like, a, like a smooth train. And that's what we are gonna be delivering. And I've been working with many of our customers on. Last but not the least, really, it's about BMC Amy data, which is really around improving availability, reliability, and really data governance for your mainframe, for your modern mainframe. So very excited about what's happening in the Z Solutions BMC uh, mainframe group and, and the Amy portfolio. Ali, I have a question for you here. How yeah. does Amy AI Ops, which is super exciting, how does that play with the broader ADE foundation that you talked about and that Ayman announced in his keynote? Yeah, the way you want to think about is the Amy Foundation is going to really allow you to do a lot of cross portfolio integrations and out of box capabilities. So think of AI Ops, BMC AI Ops, tackling the mainframe problem, but really to get visibility from distributed to mainframe. So think of any banking application on any uh, healthcare application, transferring a balance, checking a balance, uh, onboarding an employee, really the mainframe is still critical. So it goes from the user on a mobile all to the mainframe. And that's where the ADE Foundation combined with B BMC AMI of AI Ops offers a unique solution for our customers. Second uh, example is Think of, as I talked about the actionability framework, how we can bring in uh, BMC Control M SaaS or, or Control M data into ADE Foundation. Uh, we are going to integrate that to deliver to our customers and, and, and uh, a, a unique capability to be able to provide analytics, AI, 
to all this data, both from Control M as well as ADE Foundation. So these are the cost cross portfolio integrations we are doing, and I'm really, really uh, uh, happy of how, how it's going. With that, Ram, let me uh, ask you a question. So what are, what is you and your team cooking in the innovation lab and what can you share with us today? Sure, great question, Ali. And it's a wonderful segue into what we call an integrated portfolio strategy with multi-horizon bets. So if we look at all the things that we're doing in the innovation labs as part of organic product innovation, there are multiple areas here to address. First, Helix Edge Computing, which is our edge computing platform that extends, that basically collects and aggregates data at the edge from a variety of uh, edge devices and brings it into an integrated platform. And further, it integrates with our ADE foundation and the broader Helix portfolio to do a bunch of things and extend the use cases for our comp our, uh, portfolio of assets spanning discovery, monitor, service management, automated remediation, and even edge orchestration, all of these together. So the use cases are extended. The second one is about log data enrichment, where we can provide enriched log data capabilities. And the art of the possible is endless here in terms of the value add for differentiated security use cases, as well as IT ops use cases. So that's something that we're uh, doubling down on. The third and the fourth boxes that you see here are tied back to what we talked about earlier with respect to what we're doing to serve the data-driven business. This is about being front and center in the data ops space with first building a, pro a pervasive set of data ops plugins from source to insights for our best in class orchestration capabilities. Beyond that, it's about building selective capabilities for the next gen data ops uh, components, spanning data quality, governance, lineage, security, and a whole host of others. The, Fifth box is about our continued quest to support modern workloads. Complementing a lot of what Ali does with the ADE Foundation, the predictive IT uh, that he talked about, we are also looking to provide a mechanism to monitor and manage serverless workloads. We are super excited about what's in store and what we're cooking and incubating in the BMC Innovation Labs. And I would also encourage everyone to go to visit the Innovation Labs booth that we have here as part of virtual exchange, where we are showcasing some of these uh, incubations. So that is pretty exciting stuff. So folks, with that, we want to kind of bring it all together in this collective vision for the autonomous digital enterprise. Even as organizations look to transform to autonomous digital enterprises and achieve business agility, customer centricity, and actionable insights as the hallmarks of success, we recognize that it's a complex journey that requires an operating model transformation, as well as an infusion of technology enablers along these five tenets. So our aspirations are twofold. One, we want to be a strategic partner in your quest to evolve to an autonomous digital enterprise. And hopefully the bets that we've made today resonate with you and kind of tie those pieces together in terms of how we may be able to continue to support you and be a trusted partner. The second aspiration for us is internally within BMC, we are undergoing a rapid quest to transform ourselves into an autonomous digital enterprise ourselves. So the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and we will be credible partners to you as we transform to an autonomous digital enterprise ourselves. With that, folks, thank you for uh, being part of this presentation. Ali, it's been a pleasure being on stage with you and sharing some of our uh, aspirations. I, for one, I'm really excited about our future and what I would call the growth and innovation phase in BMC's history like never before. Same year, Ram, and, and you are leading the new muscle of innovation at BMC, and it's really exciting uh, to see all of this. So, so great to partner with you and great to partner with all our customers and shout out to our customers for working with us and, and helping us get to the next level. Thank you so much, everyone.